Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Hindo's All Topics. Hope you're doing well. Hope you have an amazing week. Hope you're looking after yourself. Now today we have an absolute Kiwi icon, a sporting legend, and just an all-around good bloke. And you know that because he's wearing a, a stunning golf tee and drinking the, the Spate Summit. So you know he's a good lad. How's it going, Eric? <laughs> yeah, not bad. Not bad. Great intro. Yeah, that's me. Beautiful. Let's go play some golf, let's drink some beers. Should I say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's a good phrase right there. Now, I'll, I'll have to start off with, mate, is, is how are you doing in general? You know, get, get into nitty and gritty, be open and honest. Uh, pretty good. I'm not going to lie, I'm drinking way too many beers. Um, uh, yeah, and I told my, I, mate, I turned 40 in May. So I did the old Warren Fitness and I went, and I, you know, like as we sure should, right? And I went to the doctor and, but what do you do? And I'm like, yep. Yeah, Drink a few beers, a few other things on the side every now and again at parties. Um, yeah, and I, and I said, but I try and keep fit every day. And he's and so he goes, right, we'll just run a, all the tests. Um, and he's like, yeah, look, cholesterol is a little bit high, but he goes, everything else, liver function seems good, you know, above, you know, probably a little bit above average. So I'm like, righto. So whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing at the moment, it's not bad, but I know it's not fantastic. Um, so that, yeah, like that's, that's probably lifestyle wise. And to be fair, I think once you get to a certain age, that becomes a big issue because you just sort of like, oh, I need to stay healthy, need to stay fit. Um, and so that, that's always been on the mind, but then, yeah, just other general life bits and pieces. There's, uh, yeah, everything's rocking and rolling and I've got plenty of projects on the go at one time and, um, trying to play plenty of golf and, um, yeah, just trying to, Trying to have a good time, honestly. T- to be fair, just have a good time with your mates, your your partner, and your kid, and you know everything else. And yeah, that's 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 the goal. Yeah, just live life, eh, mate? So, so we'll we'll, we'll touch base a little a little bit of of the, uh, your sporting career, but we're not gonna we're not, not gonna touch on that too much because I know I know what you're doing at the moment and what you get up to these days is a lot more what I want to focus on, but. Uh, yeah, so you've done you've done quite a bit, haven't you? You know, you've just done you've just done a, a little bit in your career. You know, you've won sixty nine consecutive races, uh, won won a couple of gold medals, uh, a couple of Holberg awards, and and just been an absolutely uh, an amazing an amazing person for many Kiwis and and pe- 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 young young boys and girls around the world to look up to, mate. You you've been absolutely absolutely stunner. Yeah, um, shit. Yeah, when I know I I put it back like that myself, and um, in a way, I feel like 2020 was for some. I, I don't know. Sound real weird, but it sounded like a time for reflection. Even though oh, yeah. I finished rowing like four years prior, I never really had a chance because it was just time, right? We just had this time, and I was sitting here at home, and I was thinking about the rowing, and and everybody was doing everything online, and and all the podcast stuff started hitting off, and everybody was just you know we were in front of the computers and. And it was just a chance where you could talk about things, you know, like past and, and what's happening and everybody just talk about how they're feeling at the time. And so I did so many like great podcasts about talking about my career and everything that talk we talked about was so different. Um, and, but, you know, I went back over and I looked at what we actually had achieved. And at the time I probably took it slightly for granted because it was just like, I'm selfishly pursuing this because I want to be a great sports person, which we all are, right? Sports yeah. people, they just want to go and do whatever wasn't until afterwards where everyone's like shit you did this and how did no one beat you you know and like they're asking these questions and you're just like well at the time i'm just like i just want to be the best and i'll take every race as it comes and and this and that and they're like yeah but you went this fast and you broke world records and you're like yeah but when you're in that when that's your environment and that's what you were trying to do you just give your heart and soul and the literally the universe revolves around you as a person and and that's basically how you like you go about it and i was like well yeah. And, and so, um, yeah, well, like when, man, like I look back on my time and, and it start it's starting to slip away a little bit because, you know, it, it has, you know, but that's the thing, right? It's been sort of been six odd years now. So you're like, shit, I've been away from it quite a while. Um, but you just, yeah, it was, uh, man, what a fantastic time in my life. And, and, you know, one of the biggest things I talk to, um, uh, young kids and and people that are doing different things. I'm like, do do whatever you can while you feel like you can do it, right? And that was when I was doing it as an athlete. I'm like, I'm fit, I'm healthy, I'm going to town, um, and and I went to town on it for 15, 16, 17 years. You know, like full full time gas, 
um, you know, and, and I produced some amazing achievements from it. Um, and, and that's what you tell people is like, you know, enjoy what you're doing. And, and at the time, I always lived by the ethos that I would continue doing rowing, like basically while the mind, the body and the heart were in it. And probably the heart and the mind just started slipping away from it a little bit mm. too much sort of after Rio. Um, and then I was, I called it a day because I was like, I can't feel myself getting up every day to do this. There's other important things in life. Um, and I just, you make that decision to be like, right, catch you later, going to do something else. Um, and that was it. But yeah, rowing at the time was, it was fun, you know, being able to represent New Zealand for Olympics, you know, winning a couple. Um, yeah, you, you're always going to look back on it and just have a thoroughly uh, good memory of the time spent doing it. Beautiful, mate. Now, I've got two points I want to cover just from what you've said then. The first one is, I want to touch on when you said, you know, you, when you, you put your heart and soul into it and you, and you worked your ass off and, you know, you put everything out into the universe and it came back to you. Yeah. Because you put so much time and energy and, and I'd say emotional effort into it and you worked so hard to, to reach these goals, when you got them, was it, was it you know, all jumping around like, yeah, we did it. But then at the same time, it was like, you know, I was almost expecting it because of how much time and effort and, and I put into it. It's a it's a funny it's a really good question you ask because Hamish and probably myself a little bit Hamish verbalised it a bit more. He really enjoyed the journey getting to that point. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, and 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 I looked at it and I was like, I didn't really, I never really thought about it until after that after that uh, like the wins took place. Yeah. Did you look back and go, oh well, this 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 and this and like another hundred and fifty things or whatever went into getting you to this point whereas i was focused on the journey um to the point whereas he mm. could really look back on the journey and be proud of what he did along that journey whereas i was like the journey's the process so there's you know what i mean there's, yep, there's two yep. different ways it's like some people look at like i've got to do the journey to get to a point whereas hamish was like i love the journey because i did it really really well and then when i got to the point it was like a cherry on top um you know, whereas I was just searching for the cherry. Yeah, gotcha. And it, it's a really different way to describe it, but at the same time, it, it sounds like it's the same thing, but it is completely different. You know, he was just wanting to be the best every single day, whereas I'm like, nah, all I need to do is be really good when the 5th of August turns around on 2012 and I'll win a gold medal. Yeah. Whereas he was like, if I'm good on the 15th of, of February 2010, I'm going to be good when it comes. You know what I mean? It yeah, was just yeah. such a different, different way we approached that thought process. It's almost like buying a, t a ticket for a festival or a concert months prior, and you're not excited until the day comes. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And that was, and that was the way it was with us. It was just such a different feeling, like going through those, um, like that period of time to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So the second point I wanted to talk on what you said before was, I think it's really interesting just from life in general point of view, you know, something that you said you, you put your heart and soul into for 16, 17 years. And then when 2016 came and you called it quits, you know, to step back and you know, enjoy life a bit more, enjoy family time and, and just live it up. How was that change of habit? You know, how did you find it being so stuck into a sport or, or just, just something you're so passionate about to finally releasing it being like shit what am i going to, what am i going to get up to now uh yeah it's a shift sideways um and it's it's like anything in life it's just mm. more prominent from us like you know like how to like how do you change that habit whereas you know people you could be a plumber right and you you're a plumber that's your job you trained you did whatever but now you're like i'm sick of plumbing i want to go and be landscaper or i want yeah, to be yeah. i want to go and work in management in this company or whatever i want to go back to university or whatever you just change your focus on this is my pathway i'm going to like side off and go somewhere else um and that was really what i did with ryan and i, and I knew it was going to happen right mm. you know you, you know it's going to happen this is going to change like this is going to be whatever whatever um and so for me it was like changing my habit was like okay right i'm i'm no longer getting up every day to go training that's not my job anymore um, because rowing did become like a job. It was like, here's your expectation. Here's your KPIs, here's your cash, um, you know, and we, and we need results and you're like, okay, sweet. And then you basically just change tack and go on a different career path. Um, so for me, I had sort of expected that moment in time to actually happen. 
And when it did arrive, I was like, oh, okay, here it is. Here's, here's my, you know, here's, here's the date. Um, and then basically it was like, right, change. There was, there's a little bit of a changeover period, but I had opportunities because I'd studied and, and other things prior. Um, and then, boom, you move into a, a new position, a job. And, and it's just quite quickly that it's just such a difference. I think the thing is it's such a difference, right? You go from being training and focused from 6.30 in the morning till 5 o'clock at night in some, some way, shape, or form for sort of five, six days a week um, with all these goals and targets and everything else. Mm -hmm. And then now you're like working 8.30 to 5 or whatever else. Um, you know, a few very, very similarities, but you quite quickly <laughs> realize that you used to have way much more time, so much more time as an athlete than you do yeah. as like a, a person in the work, workforce. You know, we'd get an hour or two during the day to be like, all right, catch you later. I'll go home and have a feed and maybe sleep, watch a movie. And then, you know, that's 10.30 and we're not back till two, right? So you've got this time and you can just do shit. And whereas like now it's like, oh, got to run down to the, <laughs> get down here, shit, I've got to get that done. Jeez, like, shit, Zach's getting home, right? I've got to go do that. And then we'll go to the supermarket and we'll do this. So life just becomes, like, way busier. Um, but it was it was the the habits just became from, like, that was what you did because that's how you do your, like, your industry, so to yeah. speak, like sport, sport is an industry. Um, and then it just changes to be, like, now you're in another industry and that's how you're expected to perform and, and, and be. Uh, in the workforce and, and whatever job, you know, basically. And um, and I just had to change those habits relatively fast. Some of them are really good, you know, not having to get up every day so early and get prepped so fast, you know. And, and and But a lot of it, you know, at the time it didn't matter because my body was in a good place. But sometimes even now when I'm, when I'm at the gym and I'm doing a session, I'm like, far oh, yeah, out, nowhere near in the shape I was when I was like an athlete. <laughs> Um, and so those habits make you slightly feel a bit down because you you basically just got to rein your expectations back into being like you yeah, you felt like you you used to be good now you're okay you know <laughs> and so probably a lot of those habits um, you know were, were a little bit of a hard adjusting because I loved rowing and I my industry and stuff I work in now is rowing and we do coaching stuff with people on mine and work in the fitness industry. But of course, it's just no, you know, like everyone's like, oh, you got these world records on the home machine. You're like, yeah, yeah, but <laughs> good, good luck if I could get anywhere near yeah, like, yeah. like a quarter of that pace at the moment. Like it just, it's just like, I'm a different person than I was, you know, in, in 2015. <laughs> well, mate, I, re I reckon if uh, the first thing we could do is if you bring back those lamb chops in 2013, I think you'll be halfway there, mate. Mm. You got the mullet, you, I've, got, the, you got the cheeky I've, handlebars. Yeah, well, what happened was, well, like, with, yeah, well, as, as you can see, buddy, the mullet's been growing since, um, shit, the mullet's been growing probably since February. Um, I just started growing because I love my golf, and I was, like, looking at Cam Smith, and I was like, fuck. It's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. It's a dirty mo, and, he, and, like, it's a dirty mo. He just has the mo. I've got, like, I've got the handlebar, and he had this, this um, mullet, and I was like, dude, that mullet is impressive. I started growing and then it went through the dancing show and I had the mo and, you know, doing dancing with a star. I, I, I kept the facial hair and I kept the mullet just to have a bit more flow. And then it sort of stayed there. And then um, I mate sort of guy, Robert Dunn, who runs Movember here in New Zealand and stuff. Yep. And I was like, oh, mate, should I grow my, my mullet out till Movember and we'll cut it off and, you know, and I'll grow back the mo. And he's like, yeah, anything you can do to help. So the mullet's here disgusting it is literally like i didn't never thought i'd grow a mullet this bad i haven't fully shaved the sides like they're short but mate i i did a video on instagram the other day if anyone hasn't seen it kiwi pet eric and i shook it while it was wet and ah it was like wow in the comments everyone's like whoa what is that mullet <laughs> uh, but hey like you know it's, it is what it is it's just like i've always i've always been probably a little bit more like unkempt kept unkept whatever um, just because, like, that's just the type of person I was, and um, yeah, she's she's a bit wild at the moment. <laughs> oh, it's, it's funny, mate. I, I I had a girthy mullet for the past year. Now I met my partner. And I only I only cut it off as it got started getting warmer a couple of months ago. And I said, I said, babe, I said, what if you don't like me without the mullet? You haven't seen me with short hair. And she goes, oh, she goes, oh, I'm sure I like you. I'm sure I'm sure it'll be the same. Oh, and, then, and then what happened? And, and then, then what I happened? Cut, I cut it off. I didn't like myself. Oh shit. <laughs> like, yeah, there Mate. you go. And then for the next week I was doing the good old oh I was not there. Nick was cold at nights and Mrs. couldn't play with the mullet. 
Oh wow. Okay. There you go. There you go. Far out. Uh, so let's let's talk about uh your time on the dance floor. What was that what was that like for you getting into that bit of that bit of avenue? Yeah, it's a really interesting one because um I guess since leaving, you know, rowing and you've got a public profile and persona and stuff like that, um it becomes like you I think you 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 get opportunities. I think opportunities is probably the right word, you know, and we do, a, I, I still do a bit of public speaking and, and other bits and pieces. And um, it's fun. I, I really enjoy doing it. And then along comes like TV stuff, you know, and they're like, oh, would you like to be a part of this and that? And so you're like, yeah, okay, go on. And then like, can I, can I fit it into my schedule? And, and you're talking with the boss and saying, well, okay, can I, can I fit this in? Because I've, I've, you know, got to be working and stuff at the same time. He's like, no, nah, yeah, good. You know, just sit at home, work on the computer, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and so, yeah. So like dancing, like rolled around and I was like, holy shit. Okay. I'm going to be doing dancing and stuff. Um, and, but at the same time, there's a great opportunity because yeah, even though you're on in front of TV and you, well, you don't want to look like a tit. Um, the, the whole idea is to do it for charity. And, yeah. and I'm patron, patron of autism New Zealand because my boy's autistic and, um, and so I'm just like, you know what, like I'll, I'll look like a tit, I'll, I'll dance or try, I'll try to dance, so to speak. Um, and, and everyone will like have a bit of a laugh at the same time. Um, and so, yeah, like I've, I've been like, it's been pretty cool. I've done Treasure Island and I've done dancing and, um, and, you know, back in the day I did fight for life, um, you know, and so, so there's been some pretty cool things, and I and I just look at them in the fact that you know I'm in a pretty privileged position yeah. to be doing what I'm doing because of what I achieved. Um, and if you can entertain people for the right reason, uh, then why wouldn't I? Um, but it was it was a really different experience because it's something I just took the 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 work ethos into like miles make champions, right? And so I'm like, okay, how many hours can I do to be good at dancing? And then, but that was my philosophy the whole way because I'm like I don't I can't dance. Look at me, like 115 odd kilograms at the moment, big guy. You, you don't move dainty on your feet, pal. And I'm like, and I'm realistic about that. And yeah, like honestly, I laughed at the same time when I told my mates they cracked up. And of course, you're just like they're like, oh, that'll be fucking funny. And and of course, and it was, and that was the whole thing. It was it was like yeah, it was funny. Um, but at the same time, you, you do it for that reason. And so it was just such a different experience because it was so far outside like my boundaries of what I would contemplate normally doing yep. um, that it was just, yeah, it was, it was just such a different experience. I love that, mate. Now, your, your little trooper son, Zach, as you said, you know, he's, he's, got, he's got autism there. And, and I want to ask, mate, what kind of blessing was that for you? You know, what was being a father to a young lad with autism? What did it teach you about yourself? Yeah, the one thing with Zach is that he's quite like he's non-verbal. Yep. So he he doesn't really communicate very well at all. Yep. Um, you know, we use an iPad, um, and we're just navigating like how like who he's going to grow up to be. Mm. And I think that's that's one of the situations is when you get the diagnosis, you're like, oh shit, what does that actually mean in terms of like your life yep. um and and yeah of course it, it, it does definitely change right and and you know that and you know that it's going to change um and so it for me it was just like accepting change and saying right this is this is it this is this is what my life is going to involve for the next yeah, however long until i'm out of here right yeah because like when you when you have a child right you can't just be like Oh, I'm having a child until you know they turn 18 and then catch later and they're moving out of home, mate. You, I don't know about you, but I as occasionally as a few times where there's a few months where you're living with mum and dad in your 20s and maybe even your 30s, you know, you're like, hey, mum, I need to come home for a bit. But but that's what I mean is you're always in their life. Um, and so the thing with Zach is that his life just becomes a more needs based life. Mm. Um, you know, and figuring out where he can fit into society. And that's probably one of the keys with most people and, and all disability sectors and, and everything else. It's like, what can you do? How, what are you going to be? Because you've got to be realistic about it at the same time and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm in a wheelchair. It means I've got to use wheelchair access all the time. That's how my life is going to be, right? Yeah. You, just, you just understand that this is how it's going to be. When you get into like the intellectually disabled, it's like, well, okay, where can they, can they work? Are they going to be on disability? Who's going to look after them, whatever? And so, 
it, for me, it's about finding where Zach is going to fit into the equation of life, right? We're all in, we're all in that equation right now. Yeah. You know, we've all got jobs. We follow structure. We do this, we do that because that's just how it rolls. Um, and when, when you put it into perspective like that as well, you sit there and you go, well, that, that's why I always talk about what we did being really privileged because it's like, well, someone else paid me to have a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, like te- te- taxpayers allowed me to sit on my ass. So I was like, shit, I was actually pretty privileged to do what I was doing, whereas other people don't get that opportunity. Um, and, and, that's, and that's the way I approached it. So when, of course, Zach was diagnosed with autism, I'm like, okay, well, right, what does that mean? And, and you get good people around you and you find the support. It's difficult, right? Which is why with the whole Autism New Zealand thing, I'm like trying to make more waves and trying to find more support networks and, and everything else for people that need answers on yeah. questions, on, on all the other stuff. Um, and then you just navigate your pathway, right? And so what I talked about before, everyone's on a path in life and the way they go. And and like autistic people and people with special needs are just like zigzags one to another. Like sometimes mm. they can be really good, really, really easy to deal with. And the other times you're like, Jesus, bloody hell, if this carries on, it's going to be a bit tough. Yeah. Um, and that, and that's basically what I try and do with Zach is find out things that tick his box, um, you know, like that he can do, um, that help him, that he wants to do as well. Um, and so far, yeah, we've we've done some pretty cool things with him and I'm starting to figure out a few bits and pieces here and the schooling and everything else. And, and he, now he's 11. So I'm right on the cusp and <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there going, yeah, boy, you just he's just about to turn to a teenager. He could be a fucking nightmare. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, damn it. Uh, but that, but that's it, right? You know, you just that's it. That's just how that's the cards that I've got, and I'll be like, righto, I'll do the best of my ability to make these these work really, really well. Love that, mate. Now, you've been asked, you were asked in the past, if you could change something in the past ten years, what would it be? And you said, you know, you you didn't want to change a hell of a lot. So I want to ask, ten years in the future, what's something that comes to your mind that either you want to experience, want to achieve, or indulge in? In the next 10 years, what do I yeah. want to indulge so, in? Let's not think about oh. the past. Let's think about the future. Oh, yeah. Well, see, the one thing is as well is that I've been in the last probably four years, well, last three years, and a lot of it came from like breakdown of a marriage. Um, yep. You know, I moved back into Cambridge with my boy and, you know, it's like, right, that, that part of your life's over, didn't work out, big deal, whatever, move on. And I feel like in the last three years, I've been very focused on the move on. This is what's going to happen. Let's carry on from here. Mm. Keep, keep, keep trucking along. Um, and so that's basically the situation that I'm at. And I bought a house and I thought, went about saying, right, can I renovate it? Can I spend time? Spent two and a half years renovating the property, um, made it a fantastic home. And now I'm like, right, shall I do it again? Because I really enjoyed the process. Um, and so for me, my like next 10 years are like, while I'm working, while I've got opportunities that I've got in front of me, um, doing what I can for Zach, uh, for myself, probably need to spend a little bit more time on Eric Murray, which is a little bit more fitness and diet. But but in a way, like I, I'd like to, but at the same yeah. time, I'm like, oh, it's so hard. You know, it's maybe entertaining this and dinner out here and beers here. And I'm like, I love drinking. <laughs> you know, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I know, and I know, it's, I know it's really, you know, and there'll be people, people will be like, yeah, well, that's bad. You're an alcoholic. And I'll be like, well, if I am an alcoholic, hundred percent, it doesn't mean like, I'm not, I don't think I am. And I've never had to go and talk to my doctor, but I'm like, I can, I don't have to have a beer, but when someone, a mate comes around, I'm like, do you want a beer? Do you want a glass of wine? You know? And it's like, yeah. am I drinking every day? No, I'm not. Am I drinking every week? No, I'm not. You know, but then when I love drinking, do you know what I mean? So, is that an alcoholism? Is it not? Um, but that's that. Yeah, we're way off subject. But the thing is, like going going forward, there's a bit about Eric Murray, um, healthy lifestyle, a little bit better with what I'm doing. Um, I want to play more golf. Um, yep. I love my golf at the moment. Um, love to be really low in my handicap. See how low I can take it, not without getting like taking time away from all the other stuff, because I know I know that I could sink myself deep, deep into like the pit of going back to try and be a professional. And I'm like, no, 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 pal, you're, you're, 40, you're 40 with a son, you know, like not going to happen anymore. But just have fun with that with my mates, renovate again, create some equity, look at like financial opportunities because we're all like, that's what we're all trying to do, right? You know, and, and potentially look at the position to be able to retire early. 
I don't know. And and that's sort of what I've got my 10 years. The next, I'm, I'm sort of looking 10 years ahead of myself at the moment and just being like, well, if we on the current trajectory, things should be pretty good in X amount of time. And and I think that's one way, you know, in rowing, we always looked at things in a four-year plan. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like when you sign up to the Olympics and, and like I only really learned that through my sporting stuff. It's like, okay, you, you make this team and then, you make land like Rio. Oh, sorry, in Athens we made the Olympic team, and I'm like, you beauty, I'm 22, I'm going to the Olympics. This is great. And then you come back and you go, right, the next four years of my life, I'm signed up, right? And you're like, I'm going to navigate the next four years in this. I don't even know how it's going to look, but in 2008, I want to be back on the start line at the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. And so you just go, right, I'm going to sign up for it, right? And that's what you do. And then I did it again and I did it again. So I had these like big chunks of like four-year segments of your life where you're going this, 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 and this. And I think that's quite a good thing for people to have, whether it's one year, two year, like three, four, five, ten, whatever. Um, just trying to figure out where you see yourself in certain periods of time. And for me, I've broken it back every two years. And I'm like, I'm going to flip a house every two years, like try and buy a new one. Um, renovate it, live in it. And if I can make 50, 100 grand off each house, I'm like, well, because I've got no ties. I'm not emotionally tied down to a house. Like I've got to yeah, be whatever. Sure. And yeah. you'd be a bit fluid with things as well. Um, and you use your spare time to look at things. I, like I never went into the construction industry, but I like love renovating, you know? Um, and so basically it's just like, yeah, like let's, let's give that a whirl. Um, and then by that stage, you know, I'm getting close to Zach being out of high school um, and figuring out where he's going to need, his needs going to be. And if I'm in a position to be like mortgage free-ish type of thing, you know, like, dude, like 30K a year is not going down, well, I shouldn't say down the toilet, but it's not going to someone else to pay your mortgage, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you're thinking, okay, I need to earn, like, you know, and we all, we all do it, right? We put a figure on, like, I need to earn 100 grand. Because I'm going to lose thirty grand to this. I'm going to learn. I'm going to lose this much to this, and I want to have a good time. I want to buy this. We want to go on holiday. We want to do this. Whatever your number is, right? You put a figure on it. Um, if you don't have to give away thirty grand, do you know what I mean? It means you only have to earn so much. You're like going, well, shit. Why can't I work three days a week? Yeah. You know, yeah, can I? Can I have this? And 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 that's sort of what I would like to be because at the moment, and and what I've been doing is as I'm doing a lot with Zach and my job gives me a lot of freedom and, and bits and pieces. And I'd love to continue doing that. So I'm not getting into a position where I'm start the body starting to decline <laughs> and you've got to keep like the hours up. You can actually like really enjoy those, those stages in your life. Um, and I'm going to need that energy and that time to be with Zach. So I'm just like, that all comes into your equation of what are you trying to achieve in this period of time? And that's what my next five years looks like, five, 10 years, like just every couple of years, this, 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 this. Um, and let's rock and roll. Like let's, let's just take it a little bit of a step at the time, navigate through, have a good time while you're doing it and see where we end up in 10 years time. Beautiful. In the next 10 years, I also want to ask is, is when will the, the, the Eric Murray line of golf tees and specialist drivers come out. I think that needs to be asked, mate. mate I, know, never, I, never. I know you're getting into your golf, so you need to think ahead. You need to think ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, I know we're all looking. We're all looking at business opportunities, aren't we? Like what we can do. Um, no, oh, I don't know. Shit, now you've put that in my head. Nah, there's some great products out on the market. I'll just use theirs at the moment. Um, yeah, but I'd love to have, that's the thing, right? It's like, I don't know. I always sit here going, shit, I'd love a little small business, like something I'm creating or making. Um, and yeah, and maybe, maybe it's, maybe I'll start doing renovations and I'll be like, oh, maybe I'll just get a little, even though I'm not a builder, but employ some builders and do renovations for people, you know, and be, be yeah. hands on and save money for people, other people while I'm doing this or, um, yeah, I had no idea, no idea, but yeah, no, nah, none of that. No, no, uh, yeah, ain't going to be no drivers or anything. I'll leave that up to Foxy. Not, Foxy not will even, start not, bringing that up. Not even a cheeky golf cap mullet collab. Imagine that, mate. Imagine on a sunny day to protect your neck. That's a good selling pitch right there. Keep your neck clean. We, we, should, we, should, we should, we should, should we Google that now and see if there's like a custom mullet cap? Go on, then. There might be someone. What are we going? Custom I'll mullet go, I'll go hair. mullet golf cap and you switch up your one. Custom mullet hat. Yeah, no, no. There's some tiger. Um, 
what's his name? Old um, mate from uh, Tiger King. But oh. nah, otherwise, yeah, yeah. otherwise there's yeah. not like it. There's nothing that actually looks like it's got hair hanging off the bat. There's like people with hats that say mullet on. Oh, there's one in America. Oh, with a bit of wig on it. The, uh, oh, is that that one there? That. Yeah, that's yeah, the one yeah, I got. Yeah. 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 Ha! And there's a few camo ones. <laughs> oh, hey, but look, I don't think there's anything in New Zealand, so maybe I should start importing oh, them. There you go, mate. That Surely there's a market for people. That's it. Here we go. Fuck, hang on. I might, especially I might especially with Cray Day listen. coming up. Especially with Cray Day coming up. Fuck, I'll tell you what, you could probably import like a fuck ton of boxes and just flick them out on them. Yeah, drop ship them and stand outside the local liquor lands as the bogans come That's out with crates. Maybe, maybe I'll maybe I'll go and talk to Spates or something and say, <laughs> "Hey guys, I've got an opportunity for you. I'll market it for you, and let's um, let's bring in ten thousand units of this and just give me a dollar off every one." Bang. I reckon you onto something there, mate. <laughs> Little... I love where this has gone. <laughs> so. Uh, while, while you're drinking that low carb, I want to ask you an interesting question. Would you stick with your spates? Or would you go for a little a little export gold? Oh, I'm not fast, man. I love my beer. I yeah, yeah. The only reason I go for the spates is I've just it's, okay. There's a couple of reasons. Yeah. One that's it's a nice tasting beer. Doesn't get me bloated. Um, and I've literally just stuck on it. And and this is gonna this is gonna sound real fucking weird. No, well, it will and it will. Go on, say it, say but it. Like, no, nah, but I looked up. But yeah, but okay. I was, you know, you get into these these moments of just like thinking about things and and whatever. And in New Zealand, we 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 don't we don't do fuck all glass recycling, but we do heaps of aluminium recycling. And I was yeah. like, okay, I filled up a wheelie bin in lockdown, you know, all of this. And and I was just like, well, why aren't we recycling our glass? And they and like I searched and stuff. They're like, we recycle about fifteen percent of our glass. And then I was like looking at our aluminium cans and we recycle like 90% of it. So I'm like, oh, well, might as well drink out of a can. So like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I just made a, I made a conscious decision, even though I'm like, it doesn't really have to do with climate change. <laughs> but it does. But it literally does, right? It's like, and I was like, well, if I'm drinking beers, why would I choose a can over a glass, right? And we asked that question. People go, a keg tastes better than a bottle and a bottle tastes better than a can. And we've all had that conversation, right? Sitting around yeah, yeah. having beers. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, maybe. Like, yeah, out of a keg's beautiful. Love it because it's cold. And that's basically a perfect temperature that you want to drink in there. Whereas most of the time your beers and your cans aren't unless you've had them in the front, whatever. And, um, and then I was just like, yeah, but what if I'm drinking a couple of dozen a week and it's like, well, you know, where's, where's all your waste going? And I'm like, well, this is getting recycled. That's not. That's getting shipped back off to China. Um, and you don't know if it's getting recycled or not, just getting dumped in the ground. It's like, well, shit, why don't I do something and get recycled? So that's it. So if, if export came out in cans, I like, and I just basically will buy cans of whatever I'm drinking. And plus, and the other side of it is that, yeah, it's really easy to carry around cans in golf bags. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I like your thinking. I like your thinking. That is good. It literally is. It's like you put you can put you can put eight to ten oh, shit, I shouldn't say eight to ten beers in your golf bag and and you just like wander around and it's like, yep, yeah, boom, shh, can, can open and then you crush them and they sit in your bag until you find a rubbish bin. You know, it's not bad. You know whereas you like the on, bottles are heavy. Ah, oh, yeah. You know that little golf bender you're gonna go on in, in not a, a little while? Just um, make sure you, you don't talk to the, to, to the head, the head of the golf clubs, mate, because I think the bars will be keeping an eye on you. Or is it not going to make any bloody money from Eric Murray, that's for sure. We could we could talk about this all day, but the thing is, there is one thing, and I, and I know it's it's licensing and health and safety and all this other stuff, but there's a lot of places and sports places that people go to, you know, like whether it's a tennis club or a squash club, whatever, this just becomes so hard to drink. Like yeah. have a have a social occasion while you're doing, you know, and golf courses, yeah, I know you have one around it, but golf's this like event where you just want to like have a few beers around the golf course and then, you know, whether it's and most people, let's let's be honest, most people are playing it half a dozen times a year if they're absolutely lucky. Yeah. On stag on stag dudes, mates, birthdays, whatever, right? And we and that's and that's how I started golf. Just like mates will be like, oh let's go play nine holes on my birthday just for shits and giggles and you drink and you try and hit some balls and See who's the man, whatever, and then of course it, it carried on. But then you see it, and it's like it's quite like the group of guys that I play golf with. We 
we're very good golfers and and but we enjoy drinking our beers you know and it's like you know you have a haggle on that okay, you better have a beer pal because that was pretty shit you know and, and then and then you have fun with it because of that um and that's the situation but trying to get beers out on the golf course at most courses like doesn't happen and hence why you're like there's some, and a lot of them are the private ones, but of course that's because they've got their own licenses. But the moment it's a public course, it becomes very, very difficult because you all you all it takes that one fucking person that causes an issue, and then you've got a problem. Yeah. Um. And that and that and that's like anything. It's like any any place. There's one person hurts themselves, does something stupid, and then all of a sudden the rules change for everybody else. Um, and I and I can see why because yeah, hundred percent. You're driving carts, getting shit faced. Um, hundred percent, something's going to go wrong, and then all it takes is oh, so and so was killed on the Matamata Golf Course or yeah. wherever because they rolled a cart, and everyone's like, oh well, no more drinking on the course. So you just it just it is what it is, and it sucks. But at the same time, you got to be responsible. Yeah, hundred percent. That's what we try and be like. I've never had to. I've never been in a position where I've been like. I'm being an absolute tool or anything on the golf course. It's an it's an enjoyment factor of like, this is what I enjoy doing rather than like, I'm going to go get shit faced like yeah, type yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah, and and to to you, especially teenagers listening to this, drink responsibly and know your limits. You know that's yeah, know your uh, limits and you'll be, mate, you'll be uh, happy flying. I I've yeah I've I've had my situations. I think one of the things over my time. Um, you know, we all get drunk and we all know what happens and, um, you know, and you've got to know when, when to have a good time and when to call it quits. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and a lot of it is always, and I, and I, I swear, right. I'm pretty sure it always, it's always come from peer pressure. Oh bro, you won't scull that back. Oh, you, do it, you know, yeah. and, and so you're like, I'll scull it. And then, you know, you're drunk and you're like, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. And you're like, yeah, okay. But, one thing we, and, and probably a little bit, especially in my rowing terms, is that we we got some good advice and, you know, for people, if someone's going to get drunk and it's one of your mates or something like that, just don't drink as much as them because if you need to be helping them out, you mm. need to be able to help them out. Um, and I've done it many, many times and, like, obviously, like, what goes on tour stays on tour, but I've I've looked after mates that have been fucked shit-faced over and overseas yeah. and you're like wow you know i've had to get them in a taxi or get them on the bloody train or wherever else and i've had a few to drink but I'm, i made the conscious decision to be like he's more shit-faced than i am so i'll make that decision to do it and yeah as you say responsibly there's a time and a place we all do it it's learning about yourselves um, but it's also respecting like what alcohol actually does. Mm. Um, and it makes you make fucking poor decisions a lot of the time. Like tell me, tell me anyone that's made fantastic decisions when they're drunk. Have you made fantastic? I never made a fantastic decision in my life when I'm drunk. Um, you know, like generally they're yeah. reasonably, yeah. They're, they're either mediocre or poor. And of course, so it's like that you just got to know, don't make any decision making while you're drunk. Hence why like you can't sign documents and other shit when you're drunk because you're like, not making a conscious decision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, mate. That is true. If, if you were to go out on the course right now, this evening, and, mm. and bash one tune on the speakers, you know, or, or get in the zone and warm up, what would that song be? Holy shit. Um, uh, I've listened to a lot in the last couple of years, um, just while I've been renovating and, and bits and pieces. Um, but I've just got such a variety, um, of music. Um, one of the songs that I probably lo like really loved for the last couple of years, um, has been, uh, where are we? Industry baby. Like, oh yeah, oh there, love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feet, like Jack Harlow and stuff. Yeah, like, it's great. Yeah. Love it. It's such a banger of a tune. tune. Yeah, and and like I just just something about it. It's like really, really good. Yeah. And it was just like boom. You didn't listen to it, or you just you know like I don't know. I've got this one thing on my Spotify, and it's just like a whole lot of random shit. And you're just like, that's a great song. I quite enjoy that, and it sits on there as like this bits of everything one that I've got. And then you listen to it back again and you're like, it's got like some nights from fun. And you're like, yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. that. Remember that tune from like 20, what, 2012, 2013. And you're like, shit, that was a good banger. It was because it was big at the time. Mm. But you sort of like, 
never like it wasn't like it was a like it was it was pretty big but it's not like something you'd be like play on repeat all the time but every now and again it's really good um so i've always just been into like bits like literally bits and pieces of what i play um i'm quite i like majority of the time if i'm doing anything i'll listen to a top 50 yep, yep. or a t- you know whatever because then you understand what's been played and what people are enjoying around the world you know like if, if you if you don't listen to music for a while you're like oh that song sounds song sounds pretty good and everyone's like oh yeah that's from 2020 you dick. and you're like oh fuck okay i haven't listened to it for that long um you know and the thing is i i always find that i have to listen to it when i'm here because you know, majority of people are listening to music while they're traveling, you yeah. know, in the cars or sitting, because most of the time now we're either watching shit on TV or watching crap on the internet. Um, and then even still, like, you know, you might see some crazy videos on, on Instagram that have come from TikTok and they're a cut of a piece of music and you're like, what's that music? You know, and you look at it and search it and whatever. Um, but yeah, probably something like that. Or like when I was rowing, especially like banging tunes, like I know it's so cliche, but fuck, I love Eye of the Tiger. You know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just such a, you know, like, it's just like, boom, 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 you know, and you're just like, oh, just always very, very cliche, real cliche in terms of like a hype song. Um, but it was basically what I used to try and like jam out to at least, at least a little bit prior to we were out racing was like something like that, which is, you know, just, just get you like, just get you moving, you know, you're like, fuck yeah, I'm ready to fight. Like I'm ready to go, ready to do whatever it is. Um, and so yeah, be, it would basically be something like that for sure, hundred percent. Get you in the Rocky Balboa kind of yeah, vibe, hundred percent, bro. Yeah, yeah. let's go. <laughs> yeah. Now, what I'd love to end it off with, mate, is I want you. It's almost like a ninety second, a minute. How long you want to be? It's. I want to hand it over to Eric now. You know, it could be a message oh, for shit. Zach in the future. You know, a message for yourself in the future. Something you feel needs to be said in the world. Could be as simple as. Have a good week. Have a good day. You know, stay happy. Something simple, something deep, something meaningful, something you feel needs to be said. It could be anything, mate. Uh, my granddad always gave me a great piece of advice. He said, nothing good ever happens after midnight. Yep. You agree? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that from like, my you might, you times. might, yeah, I know, yeah, right? Yeah. You're like, this is this going to be the best night of my life, and you're like, yeah. no, it's fucking not. Like you, you, you pissed. You're like, whatever, and you're like, no, nothing could ever happen. Like, no, um, well, that's sort of like part of it. Um, no, I've, I like a lot of people will 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 do podcasts or anything else, and people are like, what would you, what would you get, what would you tell Eric Murray, like a ten year old, or you know, mm. those real, mm. very standardized questions and bits and pieces. And to be fair, unless it's, I feel like, unless it's helping you financially gain or whatever it is, um, I'm always like, make fucking mistakes. Figure yeah. out what, figure out how not to do shit. Like, you know, um, try things, have fun, experiment, do this, do that, try anything you fucking want to do. Um, because at the end of the day, like, we're, we're, we're pretty insignificant because we're like, we like, you know, I don't know who, there's that quote, hey, eh? it's like, we're literally flying on a piece of space. Yeah, through the on a fucking floating thing. rock. So, yeah. oh, 100%, right? And like, the more the more you start to understand that and go, well, we, we literally, we are, right? There's, I'm, I'm, I'm basically an atheist, you know, I don't believe in, in, in God or anything else. I'm like, I, I, I look at science and I look at it and, it blows my fucking mind i'm like this is crazy but then i and i know it's easy to believe in that but then i believe that we're like this is you look at science and you look at evolution and you look at everything else and you're like we are here right at this time it's like there were people back in 1700 who were there at that time yeah you know and there's been people because they're part of history and we remember them now we didn't remember people ten thousand years ago you know like there's all that stuff so it's just like well we, we've got to be part of this functioning society and, and all this other shit that goes on. But at the end of the day, you're an individual, right? You make your own decisions. You be who you want to be. Yes, we all have to fit in in some way, shape or form. All right. We know that. Um, but do what the best that you can to enjoy the time that you're here. If you can make change, great. If you can't, doesn't matter. Um, but we're all here. We're all doing our own thing. Um, so you may as well like try experiment, do whatever you want to do, make bad, make good decisions, make bad decisions. 
Um, but at the end of the time, like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in a hospital bed at some stage, hopefully in my 80s or 90s, going, you know what? Great run, pal. Great mm. fucking run. Time to clock out. Here's your card. Have another beer. Drift off to sleep and don't wake up tomorrow, you know, and, yeah. and that's yeah. it, you know. And But make the, make make decisions, even though, like, life is – is I've made some fucking pretty poor decisions in my time, especially when I was younger. Um, but – nothing was ever a decision that was going to affect my future mm. you know no drugs at fucking school or no fucking taking drugs on a plane or or drink driving or anything like that i'm like i've made wise enough decisions that i'm not going to fucking kill anyone um you know all that sort of stuff so that i can be in a position to be like hey i'll see out the world you know and, and you know I'm, I'm sure we we don't have the time to talk about it now but you know like suicide is a massive thing you know and i've never been i've i've had um, I've had friends that I know that have killed myself, intimate friends that I know that have that have committed suicide. I'm like, you're fucking idiot, you know. And like, you're like, I know that you're going through pain, and I know you're going through hardships and all this other stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you know, you can have fantastic weekends where things you're like, fuck, that was cool. Remember that weekend mm. we did here, we did here. You can do that until the day you die, you know. But don't don't make the day you die next week or tomorrow or the day after. Like, see it out, you know. Things are tough, you know, financially, physically, emotionally whatever else, but everybody, like no one, there's not too many people that are like having a real cruisy time. You know, even people with cash are not having a cruisy time. They've got struggles. Everyone else has got issues. It makes their issues bigger because everyone else wants money, you know, whatever. But um, just, yeah, see, like, enjoy, enjoy your time. Do what you want to do. Um, like you, pal, right? You made a podcast. Everyone, you know, get people to listen to it. That's what we want, right? You enjoy yeah. it. Um, and, and so that's it. And find things that, that tick your boxes, you know, that, that stimulate you, that get you going forward. Um, and that's basically what I'm going to do. That's what I've done. I'll carry on doing it. Um, and at the end of the day, I can sit here and have a few beers, have a smoke, whatever out on the, on, in the garden in front of the pool and be like, yeah, boys, this is great. You know, you're enjoying it. How's life? And, and just have chit chat. And then look every day and the sun comes back up again. Earth rotates, do it again enjoy what's coming up in the future um, and live life to the fullest. So that's, that's basically it. Right. And I know there's been people before us that have lived life to the fullest going to be people that come behind. Um, and I feel like I'm just in a position where I can, you've got to live life to the fullest in your means that you've currently got. And that's mm. basically what we're trying to do. Um, live it to the fullest. If you've got to get out of it, get out of it. Don't, don't, whatever. Um, find out what's going to really make you as an individual like happy um, as much as possible. We're not always going to be happy. Um, there's always going to be times where shit gets really tough, um, but carry on, move through. As I say, like life carries on with or, you know, um, I shouldn't say with or without you, but it literally does. But you need to be here to just see how it goes. Watch history go by, see what people talk about, um, you know, and see... Like I, I just get a buzz out of thinking, where the fuck is the world going to be in like 2050? Right? Yeah. yeah. Do you, I sit there sometimes yep. going, okay, I'm going to be 70 and I'm going to look back and go, holy shit, what the hell just fucking happened in the last three decades? <laughs> you know, but of course by then, you know, it's like maybe we're colonizing fucking Earth, uh, the moon or the Mars or whatever else. And you'll be like, holy shit, how crazy is that? You know, and, and of course that's it. So um, enjoy the ride. And that's and that's literally it, right? Enjoy the ride, enjoy yourself, enjoy other people, um, and yeah, that's that's basically it, pal. That's bloody awesome, mate. That's a good note to end it on. Thank you for that. No worries. Well, mate, I want to say thank you for taking the time and and clearing a little slot in your busy schedule that's to come and, and sitting down and those topics, mate. I, I really love this yarn. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, nah, no problems. Just sorry we couldn't get there in in person. It's just like life, as I say. Life gets a bit crazy, but um, we can still pull this off for sure. Exactly, mate. You got to do what you got to do, eh? It's a beautiful, mate. And to you listening, you know I love you. There's no, there's no silly questions in the world. As I always say, ask questions to better yourself. And as always, do what you know is right. Do what makes you happy, and do what you need to need to do for you. Nearly had it. Until next week, talk to you later. Love is lost.